Avogadro's number is a fundamental part of our universe. It is defined as the number of units, meaning atoms or molecules, in one mole of any substance. This number is important because it links the microscopic world of atoms and molecules to the macroscopic world of grams we know so well. If you want to know the number of atoms or molecules in your mass of a certain substance, you can simply multiply the number of moles of the substance you have by Avogadro's number to obtain this value. To obtain the amount of moles of your substance, you simply divide the mass of your substance by its molar mass, which, for elements, has the same numerical value as atomic mass and can be found on the periodic table, and for molecules, can be found by adding up the atomic mass of every atom present in the molecule. So, for example, let's say we have 58.44 grams of salt. This number seems weird, but trust me, it'll all make sense soon. Salt is a compound consisting of one atom of sodium and one atom of chlorine. Sodium has a molar mass of 22.99 grams per mole, and chlorine has a molar mass of 35.45 grams per mole. The molar mass of one molecule of salt is the sum of these two masses, which is 58.44 grams per mole. Since we have 58.44 grams of salt, we divide by 58.44 grams per mole to find the amount of moles of salt we have, which is exactly one mole. Then, to find the amount of molecules of salt in our pile, we simply multiply one by Avogadro's number, and there we have it. There are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of salt in our pile. This bridging constant serves a vital role in the field of chemistry, and although named after Italian scientist Amadeo Avogadro, it wasn't he who calculated the value of the number. He did, however, play a crucial role in its history, and has good reason to have the constant named after him. He proposed in 1811 that the volume of a gas is proportional to the number of atoms or molecules, regardless of the nature of the gas. This became modernized to include the fact that the gas is at a given pressure and temperature and is named Avogadro's Law after him. The constant itself did not show up in calculations until the year 1865, when an Austrian scientist named Josef Loschmidt published a paper attempting to estimate the size of molecules. He did calculate a constant in this paper, which is not in fact Avogadro's number, but it does provide a way to solve for Avogadro's number through the ideal gas law. You may know the ideal gas law through this expression, but it can also be expressed in terms of the number of particles present and the Boltzmann constant. N can be expressed as the volume of a substance times another constant that represents the number of particles of an ideal gas per volume at standard temperature and pressure. This is the Loschmidt constant, the constant that Loschmidt himself calculated in 1865. He did this by starting with an equation of his colleagues, James Clerk Maxwell, that defines what he called the mean free path, or in other words, the average distance between two atoms or molecules. He manipulated this equation to represent the diameter of molecules, d, in terms of what he called a condensation coefficient, or the ratio of the volume of one mole of a substance as a liquid to the volume of one mole of the same substance as a gas. Loschmidt had to estimate the value of this coefficient though, for no gases had yet been liquefied, and wouldn't be for another 12 years, and this estimation gave him a value for d of about 1 nanometer. With this, he solved for n naught, and he found a value of 1.81 times 10 to the 24th particles per cubic meter. This can indirectly solve for Avogadro's number, starting with the ideal gas law expressed in terms of the Boltzmann constant and number of particles, substituting for n with the expression with the Loschmidt constant, rearranging the ideal gas law to express it in terms of the Loschmidt constant, and using a relationship between the ideal gas constant and Avogadro's number. Plugging this into the ideal gas law, we get the relationship that solves for Avogadro's number. Using Loschmidt's calculated value for his constant yields a value for Avogadro's number of 4 times 10 to the 22nd units per mole. Loschmidt's calculations for his constant were obviously off, but given his technological constraints of the time, the number is impressively close to today's accepted value. The first direct calculation of Avogadro's number was done in 1909 by French physicist Jean Perron, who in his paper proved the existence of atoms through showcasing Brownian motion. He calculated the constant in multiple ways, being very thorough. 
I covered the work done by Perron in this video, which I will link in the description if you are interested. Perron's calculated value for Avogadro's number was 6.023 times 10 to the 23rd units per mole, extremely close to today's accepted value. The number would be refined even further in 1913 in a paper published by Robert Millikan in which he calculated the value through his experimentally found value of the charge of an electron, a topic I covered in this video, which I also will link in the description. As the value of the charge of the electron has been refined further and further throughout history, so has Avogadro's number, and today it rests at a value of 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd units per mole. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here if you want to see more scientific progress made during this time period. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.